G'day and welcome back to another Wimbledon video. This video is for geography teachers in particular. What I'd like to encourage geography teachers to do is to think a little more laterally when it comes to what you're teaching. Now, many of you might be sitting there thinking, well, you know, I, I'm not actually a you know trained, experienced geography teacher. And so you might hold on to textbooks or, or worksheets or something like that uh, to ensure that you're teaching the syllabus. But I think the geography syllabus is really helpful for looking broadly at contemporary issues in society today. And it lends itself actually to some really interesting case studies that you can do which cover a whole range of syllabus dot points. They ask questions, and they allow students to, to have a think and to actually decide for themselves what they think about the topics. It actually hands a lot of kind of autonomy over to the students. Now that might sound scary to you, but what it does is it actually frees up a lot of your planning and organization time. What you might do is, is come up with a, a case study where you can download and, and find a whole bunch of articles and questions, guiding questions, and allow class discussion using the syllabus to think through some of the issues that we find in our world when it comes to geography. Now, that, that's easy enough for me to say, but I thought, let's show you. I've, I've got my, my trusty laptop here. Due to the, the magic of YouTube, you can't see it, but trust me, it's right there. And I've just got the, the geography syllabus open and got a couple of different tabs there for different stages. Stage four and five is available here. And I'm gonna look at some of the things in the syllabus using one case study. Now, this is not something that I have looked at in, in great detail. I've never taught this. I simply thought, what's something that, that I'm interested in that uh, I don't know that much about, but I might wanna teach and might wanna think through with students one day. And uh, this is something that another colleague of mine and I have, have uh, traded banter over uh, the future and what it's going to look like transport wise and the case study that I think works really well now that I've spent literally no more than 20 minutes thinking about it. And this is what I'm saying. There's so many issues that hit key points in the geography syllabus that it doesn't have to take a really long time. The case study I'm talking about is self-driving cars or autonomous vehicles. Now, what do we know about self-driving cars? Uh, they've been a concept for a really long time. We know that a whole bunch of the big companies are working on them as we speak. Tesla have self-driving cars, uh, Google, a whole bunch of different big companies are thinking through how to use self-driving cars in the future and how to profit from them. So you might be sitting there thinking, what has this got to do with the geography syllabus? A whole heap. Let's have a look. If I look at the first one, I thought stage four syllabus, if we're thinking through interconnections, just a couple of the key inquiry questions, even before you get to the content, self-driving cars have, have a bit to do with that. So how are people and places connected to other places? So thinking about, well, where are roads already connecting people and how do people get there? What role does technology play in connecting people to people, goods, services, information in other places? So self-driving cars, obviously very, very closely connected to that dot point or to that key inquiry question. For example, at the moment in Western Australia, we have self-driving trucks. The mining companies use them. So they're remote controlled, they're driving in the middle of nowhere, but they are completely autonomous vehicles. There's no one inside them. So that's an example where goods are being transferred and connected. Uh, what are the consequences of a globally collected wo connected world for people and places? So self-driving cars, one of the, the, the consequences that you could think about when it comes to the global connection of the world is climate change and is the effect of pollution from transport. That's really a huge issue that, that we should be thinking about in geography. The last key inquiry question, why are con interconnections important for the future of places and environments? Now that's a really interesting question if you're thinking through self-driving cars because if we are getting connected as a world using the internet for example then what place does the actual location of someone have in that equation? If you can now FaceTime with people across the world does it matter where they are? 
And a lot of studies have shown that in fact, the more connected we get via technology, the lonelier people become. And perhaps the more important it is for them to actually go to places where there's other people and interact with them. So that's a key part of kind of the uh, the positive side of self-driving cars. Elderly people, disabled people that are no longer able to drive and transport themselves easily will be able to with self-driving cars. That is huge plus, a huge plus. Now content, investigate the influence of, influences on and effects of people's travel and recreational, cultural or leisure connections with different places for the future. Self-driving cars is going to have a big impact on that. Next one, technology. Students investigate the way transportation and information and communication technologies are used to connect people to services, information, and people in other places. Surely, self-driving cars lends itself to that completely. Next, trade. Investigate the ways places and people are interconnected through trade in goods and services across a range of scales. Once again, beautiful. All right, let's look at some stage five. So that's stage four, interconnections. Perfect for that unit. What have we got? Human well-being. Let's look at human well-being. Key inquiry questions. Got a couple there. What are the economic, social, and environmental impacts of variations in development and well-being? So that's, that's an interesting question, looking at the idea of, well, when you're looking at a city and transportation in the city, public transport is available in certain areas and not in others. What impact does that have? What impact would self-driving cars have on that? How do governments, groups, and individuals respond to inequalities in development and human well-being for a sustainable future? That question's perfect for self-driving cars. So think about it. The government can subsidize the technology. The government can regulate to ensure that they are safe. The government can also regulate to ensure that they are as environmentally sound as possible. If we can reduce, if we can say electrify all autonomous driving cars, well, that's gonna have a huge impact on how much we actually use and, and kind of improve the way that we transport ourselves around, the way that we develop, the way that human well-being is improved. If you're able to say, I'd like a car to, to pick me up at this time and drive me to this place, don't have to worry about parking, don't have to worry about uh, staying alert on the road if I'm really tired. There's a huge impact on human well-being from self-driving cars. Okay, looking at some of the content. Investigate ways of measuring and mapping human well-being and development. Investigate causes, issues, and consequences of spatial variations in human well-being. So one of the things you could talk about is the daily commute. As, as cities urbanize, as they get bigger, as we get traffic congestion, as we have people driving longer and longer to get to work, well, one of the issues that self-driving cars surely can have a huge impact on is this idea that you could actually live further away from the city with a self-driving car. You could set your alarm to get up at four o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning, hop in your self-driving car and get two or three extra hours sleep in your car driving to work. So very interesting thinking through contemporary trends in human well-being and development. Uh, what else have we got? Investigate causes. Yes, uh, investigate the reasons for and consequences of spatial variations in human well-being. So, so self-driving cars would kind of take away some of the inequalities that we find from that spatial variation of people being able to live close to work and afford to live close to work, having a much, much better standard of living. So human well-being, there's a whole bunch. Uh, improving human well-being. Investigate initiatives to improve human well-being in Australia and other countries. Self-driving cars, it, it really would revolutionize the way that, that we as humans interact with each other uh, through freeing up a whole bunch of time. And, and hopefully also one of the, the key points that people who drive or who push for drive for uh, self-driving cars is it would lower the, the rate of, of crashes or fatalities. I think the, uh, I read an article like five minutes before I turned on the camera, 94% of crashes are caused by human error. So these people who are saying, oh, it's dangerous to put computers in charge, I would certainly take those odds. I would certainly take the odds of a, a computer malfunctioning over every single person you're driving with and for at all times being alert and safe and knowing what they're doing. Because at the moment, surely we'd have to say that 
that this idea is going to save lives, uh, not just improve well-being. So that's human well-being. Let's quickly go through. I'll just do one more because I'm starting to wrap it on. But hopefully you're seeing that just picking a contemporary issue and having a think about it, looking at the syllabus and saying, where does this fit? You might be able to get a little a kind of contained unit that hits a whole bunch of syllabus dot points. You might be able to change the way that you teach geography and, and show the kids how interconnected everything is and be able to get them to own their learning a bit better, get them to think about the issues, get them to investigate the issues, and, and hopefully enjoy geography a bit more. It's a fascinating subject if you can teach it right. Um, I'm sure I don't have to tell you guys that. All right, what have we got? Changing places, thinking through changing places. This is perfect for self-driving cars. Uh, key inquiry questions. Uh, why has the world become more urbanized? A lot of it has to do with transport. A lot of it has to do with jobs and where people need to work and connect with each other. How does migration impact on the concentration of people into urban areas? So this, all of these questions can be brought into this self-driving car kind of case study. As I was talking about before, with self-driving cars, people could actually de-urbanize. They could so spread out further into, the, into suburban areas and even rural areas and travel further into work. Uh, how does urbanization change environments and places? Um, so you could think through and say, well, this is what urbanization has done to places. What would it look like if everyone had a fully autonomous car? So for example, you would not need to go to the beach park your car and then get out and get everything out. We could have drop-off zones, your car drives you to the beach, you get everything out, it drives off, finds somewhere further away, parks itself, you're at the beach, you then turn on the app, come pick me up in 15 minutes, you get everything ready, you go back, boom, it's there, you hop in, you go home again. That's gonna surely change a whole bunch of things. For example, car parks. Car parks aren't gonna be needed. Hop down to Cronulla today, bumper to bumper, hopping into Cronulla, huge car park there, right near the beach. Doesn't have to be there. So how would self-driving cars change environments and places? Not just that. If we could get all these cars run on electricity, well then fuel is no longer gonna become an issue. So we could have kind of uh, the, the concept of, of you know various petrol stations could become electrical charging places but you don't have to be there. The car can set it up and, and pay for it, no issues whatsoever with the technology that we have. So maybe you might have a change in how petrol stations are run. Save a whole bunch of time and effort of consumers having to go and buy their petrol. So all of these questions uh, are gonna change urban environments. What, what happens to people's jobs if we have fully autonomous cars? What happens to, to couriers? What happens to um, you know, Lyft and Uber drivers? What happens to transportation? Huge changes in the environment caused by changes in society. What else have we got? What strategies are used to manage environmental change in urban places? So how is the government gonna kind of run and regulate and make these changes work positively for society? What's some of the content? Uh, investigate differences in urban settlement patterns between, uh, patterns between Australia and another country. So that might lend itself towards thinking through the idea of Australian urban centres have been set up for driving as the main transport hub. Compare that to, to some Asian countries, compare that to Tokyo, Beijing, where public transport is king. That's a, that's a very interesting um, way to think through it and then using that with self-driving cars. And how might that make those areas change? Uh, investigate reasons for and effects of internal migration in Australia. You could bring that in when you're talking about the, the need for people to live closer to work, etc., etc., and how self-driving cars, as I stated earlier, might change that. Australians urban in future. Uh, investigate the management and planning of Australia's urban future. So this, this part in particular would be brilliant for self-driving cars. So you could talk about the idea of saying, well, where are we at the moment? Where do people live? What do we need from an employment point of view, transportation point of view? How do we manage that? How do we manage population increase? How do we manage the, the burgeoning, the kind of the huge increases in uh, property prices? What would self-driving cars do for that? How can the government plan it? So it's been a long video. Hopefully it's, it's a really helpful kind of case study to just show you guys in as uh, humble a way as possible 
I haven't spent any real time on this. It's just me showing you how easy it is. Any old teacher can do it. Find a topic that's contemporary at the moment, read a few articles, look at the syllabus and say to yourself, how might my students be able to talk about and discuss this unit? And how might they be able to debate and investigate how that unit relates to the syllabus? And do it in a very open kind of way. Show the kids the syllabus, show the points that you need to hit. And then have a look at the case study, have a look at those things and marry them together in class. Kind of making that learning kind of visible. All right, that's enough from me. Uh, hopefully those people that uh, have watched have got some great ideas of thinking about case studies they can use, even if it's not self-driving cars. Hopefully it's just a way of showing and encouraging you to have a go at this. I reckon students will love it. All right, catch you guys next time.